five actually. At six, we'll bring you a major bulletin. Don't miss it. After that is uh, Lisa Legosian. It's going to be great. But right now, it's time for the Big Hard Fact. Anytime you hear the 5 p.m. news update, you know that it's time for the Big Hard Fact. And from now until six, we're diving deep into one big issue in Nigeria today. And today we're talking about real estate fraud. This is a big issue that affects so many uh, Lagosians and Nigerians. And it brings me to today's big hard fact. According to the, to the state government, Lagos has a housing deficit of 2.5 million. That means that for us to be able to say we have enough homes for everyone, Lagos would need 2.5 million more houses. Even if a house costs 5 million naira to build, that means it would cost over 12 trillion naira to build all the houses that we need. So obviously this means that for the near future, we're going to have a shortage of houses. And that means that we're going to have a lot of people who want to rent or buy homes, but either cannot find homes or have to pay a very high price. This leads to desperation and fraudsters are aware. And they prey on that desperation. This is part of why real estate fraud is so rampant. And we're going to be looking at this as well as other reasons why it's so rampant. We're going to be showing you the red flags to look out for. And we're going to be looking at the measures that have been put in place to combat real estate fraud. Now, I say we because I'm not alone here. My guests are uh, experts in the real estate business. My first guest is uh, an estate surveyor and valuer. He's also a member of the Nigeria Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers. Rutmi Ido, thank you so much for joining us on Hard Facts. You are welcome. We're also ex- yes, we're expecting our second guest as well, who is also a, a, a chartered estate surveyor and valuer with over a decade of experience in real estate. He's an officer of the National Institute of Estate Surveyors and Valuers. His name is Aking Olatunde. Aki Latin Day will join us eventually. Now, before we started, Chukudi was going to share a, a very interesting story with us about something that happened. Where did it happen? Well, it happened at number one, Karimu Street, off Oye Banjo Street, Alakbere, K2, Lagos. Now, you know, Sandra, you mentioned red flags. Mm. If you hear, you get one house <laughs> when they never complete. <laughs> but they won't collect money hmm. wrong for your life. Really? So you have a situation where certain persons give their property to developers. Mm-hmm. Now these developers would control the property and get the money for a certain period of time mm-hmm. before they hand the property back to the rightful owner or the owner who in the first place says, we are develop my property. Now there are reports of people collecting money from multiple people like in the case I mentioned, you know, the house at number one, Karimu Street, off of Ebanjo Street, Alakbere, K2 Lagos, it happened this year. Hmm. Now, close to 20 people paid for one flat, just one flat. Now, you know, in the process of conducting investigation, they discovered that over 200 people were defrauded. And it was to the tune of around 50 million naira. So you have a situation where, you know, people in their desperation to get accommodation, would put the word out and you have agents who come and say there's a developer that is working on a property mm. you know we just need money to complete the wiring and maybe do plumbing work or run for your life mm. run mm. for your life mm. it was really very very devastating and heartbreaking because i followed the story at the time mm. and certain people who you know had gathered a lot you know to pay for their to pay for this accommodation were left devastated and heartbroken because you would not get your fund and you know some long court case would begin and you just need to get your accommodation mm. nobody is telling you where to get your money back from you know the person has been arrested by the police they would begin you know the court process and you are back to square one very mm. unfortunate mm. Uh, mr ido i have to uh, ask you please to start by talking about real estate fraud itself what are the different types of real estate fraud that exist here in lagos well uh as a, an estate surveyor and valuer, my experience has told me that whether you want to buy or you want to let, 
there are certain pitfalls that you must avoid. The property that you are going to buy or let may not be genuine. The title to the property may be encumbered. Say that again. Is, mm -hmm. It may be it may be subject of litigation. Okay. That is two or three people. Uh, Oh, sorry about that. Uh, we're going to get back in touch with our guests again. Uh, Chuku Dezuku, thank you so much for sharing that story with us. And don't forget, by the way, that you, who's listening at home, you are my most important guest. And I'm going to want to hear from you as well. I want to know what experiences you have had with uh, real estate fraud. Tell me the stories that you've heard. You know, what advice do you have for people who want to buy, who want to sell, who want to rent their houses? Or their land to avoid fraud. Now, finally, we've got Akin, uh, uh, Aki Olatunde on the show with us, and we're going to get back in in in, in touch with uh, Rotimi Do as well. Both of them estate surveyors, both of them valuers, and both of them with massive experience doing this work. Nata, kindly call back Rotimi Do. Thank you very much. Okay, Nata is the name of the young woman who takes our calls, who screens the calls when you call into the station. Now, uh, Akin, before you joined us, uh, Mr. Do was answering questions about the different types yeah. of real estate fraud that exist here in Lagos. Now, okay. we have him back on the line and he's going to continue where he stopped off. So, sorry about the break in transmission. No problem. Uh, I'm talking to Mr. Do now. Yes. yes. Like so, I was saying, mm. I said the property may be subject of litigation. Okay. The person who offered the property for sale or to let may not be the proper owner. It may be someone who is who wants to obtain money under what you call pretense. He may not have legitimacy to either let or yeah. sell. So those are the pitfalls in property acquisition. Okay. Those uh, are what you should avoid okay. if you want to let us or buy. Okay. Are there additional yeah. things, Mr. King? Yeah, of course. Uh, to corroborate what my learned uh, colleague has just said, you see, when you are letting or buying, whichever the case may be, you need to be very cautious. Take extra caution because the scammers and the would-be uh, people that want to get your money under false pretense, they are on the pro. And uh, you that you want to let or buy, you need to take those cautions. It depends that when you are going to inspect the property, it is advisable not to go alone. Because all these people, what they do is they show you a property that they may not even have any brief or instruction on, mm. and they tell you, uh, oh God, pay, pay, pay now. You know, the, 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 the kind of urgency they, they try to raise and make you feel like, oh, if you don't take that property, then you're not going to get any property in Lagos. You're, you are the person who wants to react immediately. Isn't this and, every real estate agent? I mean, I, no. I've been looking for a house for the past six months, and every agent I've met has made me feel like, Madam, if you don't take this house, you're not going to see another house. Well, Does it well, mean I've been meeting only frauds? You, on that, on that, on, uh, with uh, Sandra, that mm. point you raised is not, uh, cannot be ascribed to excess of real and valuers. Exactly. Uh, you, you, uh, you, you that, that is a prospective tenant. Mm. Eh? Mm. If I'm giving you a property that I manage, mm. so you take it or you don't take it, mm. I'm not at loss. Because I know somebody else, some, someone else will always take it. Mm. And besides, besides, before you take my property, mm -hmm. there are processes and procedures. So if somebody is telling you, oh, you have inspected the property you have now, then that is a red flag. Mm. It needs to, you need to know who owns the property. Do you have the power, let's say power of attorney, okay. or the mandate to let or sell that property? Okay. You also need, in, the, in case of letting, you need to be given a draft agreement before you even pay. I see. Most, most people don't know this. I see. What, why are you, you, know, you are moving into the property? On what term and conditions? Hmm. You need to know this thing. You need to get a, a letter. Detailing everything the transaction is all about. That is the offer letter. Mm. You need to accept the offer in writing. 
And I mean, these processes are there. But our people in Lagos, ah, they want it now, now, sharp, sharp. By the time you do that, you'll be falling into, into, into the wrong hand. My goodness. Let me come to Mr. Ido. Uh, hold, 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 hold on, Mr. Olatunde. Uh, Mr. Ido, which of yes. these types of fraud are the most rampant? So we've talked about the different types, right? Which of those yes. types that we've both, you and uh, uh, Mr. Olatunde, which of the types that you've mentioned are the most rampant? Well, is uh, people want to obtain money under pretense that they have an instruction to share or, or let. This is what you have to be very conscious of. Mm. If you want to buy, for instance, you need to engage the service of a professional. And primarily, these are estates of yours and valuers. Yes. Yes. Though they are banned by certain laws and regulations, yes. they will go all out to make sure that you are not defrauded. So that is the very first thing, that to, to, to make yourself free from this kind of... Uh, money obtaining money by pretense mm. that is that's number one okay if you want to buy for instance mm-hmm. having contacted an estate of your valor you have given him the responsibility of verifying those things that may lead you into lead you into fraudulent people getting exactly. money from you and that is they will go all out to make sure that they verify the properties that you are buying hmm. by yeah. conducting what we call a legal search yeah, legal at the Ministry of Lands. Yeah. Or, at, for instance, if it is LSDPC, hmm. that's Lagos State Development and Property Corporation, mm-hmm. they also yeah. have their own registry where yeah. you will verify the title. So those are the things that you need to do. You must also, if assuming the property does not have a title, mm-hmm. you need to go to the site and do a mouth-to-mouth investigation of who, of who truly is the owner of that property. Exactly. With you going about and with your professional champions championing your cause, mm-hmm. you are not likely to fall into fraudulent uh, hands. Okay. So you need to do proper investigation through a professional. Now, while you were talking, uh, Latunde was yes. uh, agreeing with you. Latunde, yes? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Does he have... Uh, does, are there more things to add? Did he leave anything out? Well, uh, to follow out to what my learned uh, colleague has said, mm. you see, our people need to understand one thing. Okay. Anytime you, you think or you need to engage in anything real estate, hmm. the first point of contact is a real estate expert. And the only people backed by law in Nigeria today to practice real estate are the assets of yours and valuers. I see. So because, like my lot of colleagues have said, they, they have certain rules and regulations of which if they fall uh, below the belt, they can, you, there is an institution that regulates us, and you can always report there is a disciplinary uh, committee or team that will look into it. Imagine if you fall into the hands of a scammer, mm. who do you report such thing to? Nobody. You just take out, the people just tell you take out and go home. Mm. But in the case of an instance of your, if that person falls below the belt or the, below the standard, you have somewhere to report to. So, what I'm going to add in this in this in this in this case is that um, when if you consult an essence of your valuer, he has taken a brief from you and he will make sure that you you are you are never defrauded of any penny. More so, we need to always be cautious. Caution. Okay. Don't always inform an essence of your when you are being related. Like I do tell my clients and people, it is not the job of a lawyer to do a, a search. When you go to the Ministry of Lands, what you meet there, 90% of them are essence of yours and some of people don't know. It is not the work of a lawyer to manage property. It is the job of an essence of yours and valuer. It is not the job of a facility uh, of an engineer to manage a facility. It is the job of an essence of yours and valuer. But, you know, what we have is man no man, like it is, uh, 
uh, uh, we said, I mean, we discussed, I mean, we said today or now this. Now, before we go deeper into looking at the fraud, Mr. Doe, I want you yes. to educate my listener about the various professionals yeah. who operate in the real estate space. Mr. Doe, well, if I am I, sick, I, I, hold on, if I am sick, I go to the doctor. If I have hmm. a court case, I go to a lawyer. If I want to do real estate deal, there are so many different types of professionals. Now, Mr. Olatunde is telling us you cannot do this without coming to uh, an estate surveyor or an estate professional. So you have the estate valuers and estate managers uh, like yourselves. You have the surveyors like yourselves. Then there are the real estate agents. There are the lawyers that Mr. Olatunde mentioned. There are the estate managers. Can you break down for us the difference between each of these professions? And what is the role of each person, Mr. Do? Thank you, Sandra. Like uh, my colleague said, we before you go into the business of estate acquisition, you must contact estate surveyors and valuers. Real, uh, they are empowered by an act to practice this profession. To to, for, to to acquire properties for you, to make properties for you and to supervise properties for you and superintend it. Now, let me tell you this. Everybody wants to be an estate agent. A retired person wants to go into real estate practice. But the people saddled with the responsibility of managing your property, acquiring properties for you, superintending your property are estate surveyors and valuers. Now, let me say this for the avoidance of doubt. Lawyers are not expected to manage property. It is the estates of yours and fathers that are tutored in the art and sense of property management. Those that call themselves, uh, they, they, they have big names that they call themselves. They will say they are estate consultants. Okay, let's see your certificate that actually qualifies you to, do, to deal in estate. They will have nothing to show you. That is why people fall under you know, to the hands of scammers. You must contact estates of yours and valuers. We are authorized by law to take care of your property, to acquire property for you, to let property for you. There are others that call themselves, uh, uh, maybe they want to be facility managers. Under estate surveying and valuation practice, you are empowered to superintend properties, you are empowered to manage facilities, you are empowered to buy, you are empowered to let, you are empowered to also syndicate loans to build properties. Estates of yours and fathers, they, they are the primary consultants, they are the primary professionals that are saddled with the responsibility of practicing estate surveying and valuation in Nigeria. Now, other professionals may just come in, they want to do things that are not clear to them, things that they, they don't know anything about. But I must tell you, whichever name they call themselves, please run away from them. So many of them are scammers. Ask for their certificate, ask for their office, ask for their link with Nigeria Institution of Estates of Health and Followers. Then you will know that we, the Estates of Health and Followers are the people shall do with that responsibility. But how about the agents themselves? Uh, I, I that is what I, that's what I, I have just said. Yeah. You know, the problem with Nigeria is that everybody wants to be everything. Okay. For instance, now, it is an aberration for, the, uh, for, for people to just go into uh, estate practice okay. without having the required qualification. I see. They call themselves a lot of names. They go to the CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission, to go and register uh, uh, company names. It is until recently, when Sanity returned to Nigeria, that they are not registered again. Once you are registered as, uh, you, you may not have the required certificate, you just go there, you go and register one uh, a name, then you go out and you start to defraud people. Apart from having gone through the required academic qualification and professional qualification by prescribed authorities, that is what can make you to become an estate of your and value. And then you can then practice real estate without 
people getting afraid of you, scamming them. Hmm. But every other person that call themselves agents, apart from entities of yours and followers, who are tutored in the art and science of entities uh, of yours and followers, no other set of professionals can lay claim to that very serious uh, business of real estate in Nigeria. I see. Uh, Mr. Akin, for example, there yeah. are things that... Um, uh, you look at when it comes to a house, you know, for, for a tenant now, for me who wants to be a tenant, yes. there are potential ways that I can become defrauded. Yes. We've heard cases of agents advertising houses for rent. I'm focusing on rent now because the average yes. person will rent instead of buy, right? So yes. we've heard cases of agents advertising houses for rent. They'll uh-huh. collect uh, money from multiple people who want to rent and uh-huh. then they abscond. Same goes for land as well. Uh-huh. How does this type of fraud happen? Can you explain that to us? Yes. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, with regards to letting, we call it letting, even though you people call it rent, renting or whatever. Letting, okay. Letting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, if you are letting a property, a three-bedroom flat, mm-hmm. and uh, you, the, you want to do is inspect the property you want to pay for or you want to stay in. See me? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Uh, so you, you inspect it. And that's why I said in my former, uh, what I said earlier, that when you are inspecting a property, don't go alone. Go with someone else, if possible. Because what you may not see, person may see it. What you didn't observe, the other person might just be very keen to observe that. So, when you inspect the property, oh, let's for instance, you are, you are getting a property now. They take you to that property and they say, oh, God, uh, this is the property, but you can't enter now. The person has not moved out. Or, the property is not yet completed. Or, uh, the, there is another person that you have to see and see another person and it's becoming a chain of people. Mm. You have to be worried of such a property. Or if they tell you that they cannot find the key. And, uh, yeah, they come in different, uh, with different uh, water uh, and stuff. Because a particular agent I tried to use earlier this okay. year told me that he couldn't find the key to the house that I wanted to inspect. Uh, you, 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 the, the best you can do is just laugh that away. <laughs> because if a, if a, if a, if a serious joker, hmm. like, if I'm letting, as an extra survey and value, I'm letting a property, hmm. I cannot find, I'm, I'm bringing you to come and, but I cannot find the key. He said, let's I go and look through, through the window. Look through the window. <laughs> another, another, it's laughable, really. Hmm. Another instance is, when you go to a property, eh, hmm. you also need to, the environment. Okay. Yeah, there are some, there are some signs you see. Because, like, a property, uh, I want to get for my clients. Sometimes in uh, in May or thereabouts, mm. we went to that property. After inspecting, I was not too comfortable. I went back. I made inquiries about that house. Mm. And I found out that the, uh, the property is always vacant every year. Like, if you take the property now, people will even move out before their rent expires. Why? Because by the time they move in, the landlord lives with them, start giving them problems. Ah. You know, you don't have the privacy. Ah. You cannot do this, you cannot do that. All sorts of obnoxious uh, rules and regulations come mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. You know, something that are not even documented in the uh, in agreement. agreement. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I find out from the neighborhood. And they tell me, oh, that this is very well. That was the language. Make you not take this out, so. <laughs> yes. Hmm. So, those are the things you have to, you know, experience a band. Mm-hmm. I mean, when, when, you, when you're out there, you're on the field, you hear, you witness, you see a lot. But most importantly, like I have said earlier, our people are... Uh, uh, people need to be very, very uh, careful. Okay. Because once this money is changed, it's gone. 
It's, it's usually hard to know, get back. Our judicial, uh, our judicial system is such it's, that... It's very slow. Gentlemen, very slow. Ge- gentlemen, we're going to continue this conversation in a bit. I want my people who are listening to call into the show because I want to hear from them as well. They probably have questions for you both as well. They're going to call and ask them. They're going to call and share their stories. They're going to call and give advice as well. What advice do you have for people who want to buy, sell or rent their houses or land? And to avoid fraud. It's 28 minutes past five. I'm Sandra Ezekwasili. Hard, hard facts will be right back. Welcome Welcome back back to Hard Facts. Facts. 
Lagos, you're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. I'm Sandra Ezekwasili. On the show with me are estate surveyors and valuers. They've got decades of experience in real estate. My first one's an of, uh, officer at the National Institute of Estates, uh, Estate Surveyors and Valuers. His name is Aking or Latin Day. And my second guest is Rotimi Ido, who also an estate surveyor and valuer and also a member of nigeria institute or institution of estate surveyors and valuers gentlemen thank you so much uh, for staying with us in the conversation you can call us right now 01277 0993 01277 1993 2993 and 3993 what questions do you have for my guests what stories have you heard about real estate fraud that's the conversation we're having I mentioned when we started that the, that the state government said that Lagos has a housing deficit, a deficit of 2.5 million people. That means that we don't have enough houses for the people who can afford to get them in Lagos. And that means that desperation will set in, which will make people more, uh, 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 what's the word now, susceptible to real estate fraud. And that's why we're talking about it today. Let me see who the first person we can talk to on the line is. We've got uh, perhaps as a doom. Hello. Good evening, Sandra. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, you know, I like this your name. The way you pronounce the name with uh, authority. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sunday. I'm calling you. I'm actually on the road. Okay, Sunday. And the topic is a very interesting topic. Yes. The the, the senior colleagues there, they have said they, all the good things, but uh, I just want to make my also contribution. Yes, please, go ahead. Like, uh, they, uh, they make mention of uh, power of that, me and other things. You know, what make uh, landlord don't used to give power of me to estate uh, uh, whatever value as uh, professional gain is that um, some of them as soon as you give them the power of autonomy, they will either sell the property and then hold on to the money and they want people to go to court hmm. before they pay you or they will pay you on instrumental on your property they sold hmm. or they lease your property and simply because you've given them power of autonomy to get you the cash will be very difficult. I see. So now. Now, now, Oh, that's quite unfortunate. Call us back if you can. But Mr. Ito, what do you think of that reason that he gave for why I'm, property owners sure, do not like to give... I'm sure I'm sure the man is not aware of what we call power of attorney. Okay. Because you can be given power of attorney, yes, that person must have known you very well and uh, ascertain that you are someone of indubitable character, that your integrity... Is, uh, How can you tell well, that someone has integrity? You can't oh, tell by oh, looking at somebody. That, that brings me back to the fact that when you are nested of your and value, mm -hmm. and we are not talking of agents now, okay. before you can become a nested of your and value, it is not going to be a joke. And for mm -hmm. whatever it was, you cannot mortgage that particular honor of being a member of Nigerian institution of nested of your and value on the altar of any uh, amount that anyone wants to uh, give you that you will run away. So uh, that makes you secure and that makes your clients secure. That makes whoever goes through you secure. Before you can give, be given power of attorney, you are not just the next man. You are not just a roadside agent. Mm -hmm. Like I have been practicing for more than about more than 30 years now. I've heard many things from, for so many people. Hmm. It would be funny for someone in the League of Estates of Wales and Valors to be found wanting. I'm not saying they are all very good, okay. but if you look at the fraction of those people that can be found capable of committing any fraud, it's going to be very rare and it's going to be very slim. So hmm. maybe my, the caller does not actually know whom we call estates of those and followers. Mm. They are special breed of people that uh, practice uh, estate, uh, that practice real estate. All right, let's talk to Fred in Lekki. Yeah. Hello, Fred. Hello, Fred. 
Hello? Yes, welcome to the show. How's Lucky? All right, Lucky is fine. Go Good ahead. Evening. Good evening. All right, all right. I'm an estate uh, surveyor. Okay. So I just um, want to... Join the conversation. Uh, lend my voice. Please, yeah, go join ahead. The conversation. Please go so ahead. So my... The first point I want to make is uh, one of the reasons why the uh, quacks became uh, encouraged was uh, because some of the some of the estate firms in a bid to maximize the profit that they get from transactions they charge too much so uh, on the fees for instance agency fees legal fees you hear some firms calling 10 10 percent then the burden becomes too much that the estate firm at times when you go outside the clients tell you are uh, your firm you guys you guys are uh, you will charge me so much then we try to start correcting the impression from the beginning. So in doing so, we push some of them out to, to the quarks. Then again, the quarks also, they made, some of them made the transacting very easy. They developed some apps. Our profession, we've not, we've not done that. We've not, we've not developed any app that helps people look up property online and make the search very easy. Hmm. So we need to adjust one or two things so that uh, we, we pull people back to us. So that's my contribution. Thank you so much for calling to make it. Now, let me move on. Akin, I have to ask you, right? Yes. Um, sometimes with tenancy, the fraud is not so blatant. Sometimes the tenants gets the property, but they ended up overcharged on fees or the agent charges both the tenant and the landlord. What are the ways in which landlords and tenants can protect themselves from situations like this? Well, uh, according to scale of charges of the institution of estate surveyors and valuers, hmm? hmm. that is mo most times that is what we as estate surveyors and valuers we are being uh, uh, advised to use, and it, it it gets reviewed every day, I think. So the caller who called himself an estate surveyor and valuer, I don't know the practice and. Uh, uh, we are getting the, all, all those information, but I can tell you we have a scale of charges with which we we, we are encouraged to practice. But beyond that, if the volume of the funds involved in this case is quite uh, large or big, as the case may be, mm -hmm. hmm, you may negotiate. But the standard, okay, for instance, letting a three-bedroom property, let's say, for five million, hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the required uh, test is to be paid to an excess of you who has uh, facilitated the transaction. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that is, the, that is the standard. But in case you're having money running into several millions or a billion or thereabouts, mm -hmm. the parties may sit down, work out an agreeable fee. Okay. Yes, it's okay. Uh, so, but, uh, and with regards to the landlord, mm -hmm. The landlord, I don't know, maybe some, in some instance, uh, uh, a special arrangement with your landlord. But most of the time, what the landlord pays to an estate surveyor is a management fee, which is quite different from a letting fee. So you need to understand the difference between the two. Because after letting comes management. I see. After letting Are comes management. Me? All right. Yeah, so if, but if, if the land of this doesn't give you the management, you just let and you walk away. Mr. Joe, I've seen situations before where a tenant rented property from somebody. And then after paying and moving in, they found out the person wasn't the real owner of the property. The real owner shows up, uses law and authorities to kick them out, and the tenant is just left just like that. So how can potential tenants protect themselves from this? It's not as if as a tenant you can demand the landlord shows you their C of O or something before you sign the agreement. So what's the protection for tenants? That's exactly what my colleague just said in, in, during the course of discussion. Mm. The very yes. first thing you make sure you do is you approach a standard office to do yes. business of estate acquisition, whether letting or sale. Yes. The majority of all these uh, agents that touch themselves around, they don't, many of them don't even have standard offices. And mm. you will 
and I need to let you know that mm. every office of an estate of yours and valuers is registered with Nigerian Institution of Estates of Yours and Valuers. Yes. And uh, your name is right in the uh, role of the people who are qualified to practice the, the profession. So the very first thing to do is approach a standard office, just like my colleague said. Mm. Uh, Paraventure, you are unfortunate to go to the hand of an agent. Mm -hmm. Don't go to that property alone. Go with somebody. Uh, almost every family we have an estate of your and value. Mm -hmm. you, the, the property may not necessarily be in the portfolio of that family estate of your and value, but you need to carry him along. Yes. He's the one that will verify the letting for you, will verify the fact that uh, who is one of this property, who is the landlord of this, and uh, you know something about fraud. Fraudulent people, once you ask too many questions, they will they run get away angry. From you. They yeah, get angry. They, they get they agitated. Let's talk to yeah. Chibweze. Chibweze says uh, that in as much as there are professionals, people are still allowed to do their marketing. Am I right, Chibweze? Yes, you are very, very right. Okay. That's right. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my, my take is this. In as much as there are professionals who are trained from the universities as um, surveyors, and real estate uh, practice mm. men. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm trying to say is, in medicine, people who sell medical equipment, they don't necessarily need to be doctors. Okay. People who sell vehicle parts are not necessarily in, uh, mechanical engineers, and so forth and so on. And that is the reason people go to school to study marketing as well, because they can market anything. So what we need to do, coming from the professional I was talking, is get regulations working. What, but when I mean regulations, I want to say, if this um, property, land or houses, if you, if you have to make sure that before they go into the market, the company selling it must be a real company with faith. One. Two, the company must have the, 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 the documents, the real documents, original documents. So your professional uh, body or your, your a society should be able to go around to these um, real estate companies, real estate agents, to know them, get them registered, and follow up on what they do on a daily basis. What are the properties they have that are in the market? Anyone that is looking for the land, you, um, how do I put you this? Continue it, or you let the public know that this company is fraudulent and this property they are selling is fraudulent. So, Telling us that uh, people should desist from selling property, I don't subscribe to that because everybody has something you have to do. And marketers have to do their job. Mm. Whether they studied that field or not, they can sell anything, including real estate. Thank you, I'm blessed. Chibose, thank you for sharing that thoughts with that comment with me. Olatunde, what do you think about what Chibose said? Well, uh, <laughs> I, I have to correct some uh, notions there. Okay. See, real estate is capital intensive. Do, you, do we agree to that? Mm -hmm. If I wish he's online and I can say yes, if he's able to agree with me on that, that because real estate is such that you don't, you cannot toy with because of its capital intensive nature, mm. then you will quite agree with me that it's not every big Tom and Harry that can participate in, 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 in it. Okay. Someone has gone to the university, spent five years, do two, three years privilege, write exam, become a professional, and you're saying some, someone, Mr. John, from one room of village, should come and participate in a, in a real estate transaction that involves millions or billions. How, how, do you, how do you marry such a thing? It is not, do, it is not doable. And that's why we are backed by law to practice. We have a regulating body. They, me, or me, that's, um, that's under the Ministry of uh, Housing, Works and Housing, which is uh, Ezra Bond. Hmm. of yours, uh, of yours, uh, of yours, and uh, Registration Board of Nigeria. That's Ezra Bond. So, it is not every big come and I that can come into real estate business or practice to say it can sell anything. No. 
there are some other things that you, until you are an instance of you and Balwa, you, may, you will not be able to interpret it. You will not be able to advise your client on, okay, you are buying a land for what purpose? You are, you are, you are buying a property, why are you buying it? I, as an instance of you and Balwa, I'm in the best position to advise you whether to buy that property for whatever purpose you want to buy, whether you should look at other alternative uh, investments, or whether you should even buy somewhere else. But, you know, you don't just buy real estate because you want to buy or you have money. If no. you just joined us, welcome to the show. Sandra Ezekwesli is my name. We have uh, real estate surveyors and valuers on the show with us, and we're talking about real estate fraud. We're looking at why real estate fraud is so rampant, and we are helping show you the red flags to look out for, and that's what uh, my guests have been kind enough to point out on the show. Call us on 012 Two seven seven zero nine nine three or one two seven seven one nine nine three two nine nine three three nine nine three. What advice do you have for people who want to buy or sell or rent their houses or their land to avoid fraud? What are they? Let's talk to you. Hello. Oh, sorry about that. Call us back if you can. 0127709931993 and 3993. Uh, Mr. Do, does a potential buyer have more rights to access information on a property than a potential renter or letter? Well, a potential buyer is, uh, has to be more careful okay. because of the volume of the investment involved. Just like my colleague said, mm. Estate surveying or real estate investment is a specialized investment. It's not something that anybody can just dabble into. Okay. It has to be handled by those people that are actually empowered by law act of, you know, to, to, to act okay. in, the, in, the, uh, in favor of, of, of their claim. We, we are tutored to do that. And because a lot of money is involved, mm. it's not something that you can just uh, get involved without proper uh, access. So, so that. you've told us, Mr. Money. Jowu, that if we want to do this, we should come to somebody like you or somebody yes. like Mr. or Latin Day. How yes. do we go about confirming that the person we have come to, who is parading themselves as a, a valuer or surveyor like yourself, how do we confirm that the person is actually licensed? Well, I must tell you that uh, the estate registration board of Nigeria that my Ali just mentioned, mm. has the names of those people that should practice essays of an evaluation. I and see. at the call, you'll be giving that information that the man that you are investigating is a member or not a member. So we can just call a all. number? Yes. Uh, Mr. Olatin, do you happen to have this number? Oh, uh, well, uh, we can make the number available to you. Exactly. Anytime you need any, anytime anyone, uh, any member of the society wants to confirm uh, anybody who is parading him or herself as an essence of your valor, we, we, we have a number and we have a registered uh, office okay. in Lagos here, yeah, which is at the Alausa, at the same time, CBD, okay. in Alausa, in okay. 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 So, we, in fact, it's open from Monday to Friday. Is there a website that people can go to? Because I know that the Lagos State Government, Missy Dou, I know the Lagos State Government recently launched an online portal where landlords and tenants can find each other and make agreements. The government says that the idea is to eliminate fraud. Do you think yeah. that the, the state is working with the professional bodies uh, in the real estate sector to verify the landowners coming on the platform? Is this happening? Of course. Should, should, course, I tell, uh, should I tell you something? Okay. Well, the, the, like uh, we've been saying, the only set of people uh, backed by law are the essays of yours and valor to practice real estate. So if any other person, like the, the new portal that has been uh, introduced, that has been introduced by Lagos State, mm. huh? uh, I don't know, but by my understanding of the old thing, of the old scheme is that uh, not only just of yours and what have you, mm. but when it comes to the specialty aspect of the real estate, mm -hmm. it is the job of the estates of yours and value. 
Exactly. In fact, it will save you a lot of headache and stress. And if you pay little or token to get their services, I'm appealing to all, all the people that are listening to me. Use an essence of your value whenever you need to do anything. Regarding How do we find them? How do we find <laughs> estate surveyors and and and, and, and everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. As at, as at, as at today, I can tell you for a fact we have over four thousand registered estate surveyors and value in Nigeria. Yeah. In fact, we have over four thousand, and I can tell you half of that four thousand are in Lagos here. Hmm. So we are everywhere. All right. Uh, we're out of time. So I need to ask Mr. Idowu, what, what would your final advice be to anyone engaging in real estate transactions as a buyer, a seller, a renter to avoid getting defrauded? Please contact, let me educate the listener. Hmm. Please contact and let us of your valuer. Don't be, don't, don't waste time. Don't be discouraged. Look out for essays of your valuer with NIESV logo and people who have ESV behind their names and they have standard offices all over Nigeria. There's no state in Nigeria where we don't have our presence. Everywhere we are. And that is my final uh, advice to anyone who wants to engage in a real estate investment. How about you, Mr. Olatunde? Well, as for me, like I said in the beginning of this conversation, my fellow Nigerians, if you need to do anything real estate, take precautions. Look out for those red flags we have mentioned to you. And make sure you do your findings very well before you drop your hard end money. It is very important that you take these cautions. And always try to involve one or two people when you are doing an, any, any real estate action. Involve an estate of you and Valra. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rotimido and Aking Olatunde, both of them uh, real estate valuers and surveyors. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for talking to us on Hard Facts. It's a pleasure, madam. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lagos, for being a part of the conversation as well. And uh, thank you for sticking with us throughout today's uh, episode of Hard Facts. As usual throughout the show, we made sure to keep you abreast of everything happening around the world. Our major bulletin is coming up in five minutes. And after that, Lisa Negotian happens at 6.30. That's what's happening. Iriti Bakari Yusuf will be interviewing Akitu, Akintu De Disu. And uh, you know, of course, that we just spent an hour, almost an hour, talking about fraud in the real estate industry. So many Nigerians have been the victims of real estate fraud while trying to buy or lease a house. And we talked about how it works and what can be done to combat it. We had eyewitness at four and we started with the big three where I told you that Fashola said that Nigeria's roads are not that bad. So Lu promised a relief package uh, to Balogun Fire victims and he also says don't call me your excellency call me mr governor lagos i am back tomorrow at 3 15 for global review and then public square takes off at four but until then you can talk to me online i'm very active on twitter s as that's the quickest way to reach me off of the air s as the that's my handle on twitter s e z e k w e S I L I. Until tomorrow, Lagos, I'm Sandra Ezekwesley. Those were your hard facts. Good night. We keep you informed. We keep you company. company. And we give you access to pour out your mind, even throughout the night. We are the first talk station of the nation. We are 99.3 Nigeria Info. Nigeria, I'm listening.